Hey everybody, welcome back to the Podcast Digest. This is Dan Lizette. This is episode 120. Can you believe we've done 120 of these? I can't. Seriously, I really cannot. This week's show is brought to you by listeners like you, people who really love these 120 episodes. They are the Patreon supporters. There's a link in the show notes if you would like to hop on the bandwagon and support the Podcast Digest. Also, this week's show is brought to you by Podbean, podcast hosting and monetization. It's the easiest way to start podcasting, podbean.com slash tpd to learn more and get your first month for free also i should mention podbean has a special going through the end of 2016 folks 30 percent off all their hosting plans i believe their annual hosting plans are 30 percent off through the end of the year so i'll tell you more about them in just a little bit but let's get to this week's show episode 120 is a, a very cool one i got to talk to somebody who basically just launched the show and you say well dan normally you feature these folks who are pretty well established or maybe they're uh you know uh independent but they've they've had a you know fairly significant back catalog but not this time in fact i'm not sure if i featured a show ever earlier in their life but with very good reason if you take a listen to 20,000 hertz and my guest this week is the host uh Dallas Taylor uh he has a pretty amazing story about his road uh in launching this show uh I don't want to give it, uh too much away from his story uh but rest assured some of you are here now because you heard his uh one of his first few episodes was featured uh by Roman Mars and the team over at 99% invisible and I get into that story about how that happened. I got into uh, Dallas's road to podcasting and uh, his uh, day job, uh, De Facto Sound, really cool stuff that he does during the day as well. It's a really interesting conversation. I think that you'll enjoy it a lot. So without further ado, let's get to this week's episode, my conversation with Dallas Taylor from 20,000 Hertz. Folks, and as I mentioned up front, my guest this week from the brand new 20,000 Hertz podcast is Mr. Dallas Taylor. Dallas, welcome to the Podcast Digest. Thanks so, ha- so, so much for having me. Thanks for joining me, man. There is uh, you're a brand new show, but I know that a lot uh, a lot of the story is yet to be told on uh, how this has all come together. But before we jump into twenty thousand hertz and uh, especially the recent experiences you've had, I'd like to let folks get to know a little bit about yourself. So before this podcast, can you tell folks a little bit about your 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 background and personal history? Yeah, so it's a little unique. I am a sound designer by trade and I uh, lead a company called De Facto Sound. And you might hear that at the beginning and at the end of the of the show. And so that's my day job. And what I do there primarily is um, I kind of like lead efforts on advertising and television promos and shows and um, game trailers and video games and documentaries and uh, essentially anything that's sound to picture. And it, um, I, I got into that from being a trumpet player a long time ago. And, uh, before starting the business, I had worked out on the West coast for NBC, G4 and Fox, and then moved out to the East coast to work for uh, the discovery channel and their family of networks. And then about seven years ago, uh, left discovery to start my own business, which is de facto sound. And, uh, from there, uh, we've built this team of five sound designers, including myself, a uh, producer, and then some amazing contract writers and other, other people around, uh, that. And, uh, it's, it's been this very slow, gradual progression toward the, the one thing that I've consumed the most of personally, as far as content, at least I would say for the past 10 years, if I stacked up television and movies and podcasts and radio, and if you put those two together, I, I, uh, I could easily say that I consume more audio content than I do everything else combined probably. (laughs) And although we don't work in audio only, we don't do music, um, which is a a little bit of a head scratcher. Um, we, we do kind of everything except for music, making things sound great and, um, good for air and, um, and all that. But, uh, so it's really exciting. I mean, this, these, it's been this, this podcast and at least what I've thought about this, these stories have been deeply embedded in my soul. And I, and I think in my team's soul, uh, for a while. And, uh, and really I would say 
it's it's really just a show that we created for ourselves that we just wanted to know the backstories of these things and we had no idea if anybody else would even be into it and um <laughs> it's it's not there to really like be a you know show piece or anything it was just like we're just having a really fun time working together as a team not you know we love working on other people's projects but it was just cool that we can do something just a hundred percent on our own so de facto sound is your company and that was sort of the breeding ground for the podcast eventually but uh talk to us you said it's been around about seven years now yeah um and i started uh, after working at the discovery channel um, uh, as a senior sound designer over there, uh, decided to kind of go out and, and start branching out into other networks and other, um, other types of, of audio for picture content. Um, and yeah, so, uh, so what's that. the, uh, non podcast day job Dallas sort of what are you and the team and the company sort of, uh, doing during the regular Monday through Friday work day? Yeah. So that's a really, it's, it is completely bananas. Uh, most of the time, uh, we are the last stage in a process that's, uh, there's typically a lot of money and, uh, and time and resources behind, and we're coming in typically swooping in in the last moments, whether that be the last few moments, uh, before something needs to go out to air, or if that's the last few weeks before something needs to be published. Um, we, in any given week, or I'll just say in any, any given day, we might have a um, something like a like a Geico spot in one one room or something. We might be working on on something for that, and then another room we might have like a promo for like National Geographic Channel, and then like another room we might have this like a like a short uh, documentary that might be intended to go to something like like a like a Sundance or a South by Southwest, and then another room we might have um, a video game trailer, and then that might just be the morning. And then the next, then, then as the, the, the day progresses, we might get, um, other phone calls and other emails of emergencies and, uh, another network or another, um, random thing or a web video, or it, it could just be anything. So our, our day job and my day job is just to make sure that the, the creative integrity of every single thing that passes through the studio is at the highest possible le- uh, level. Uh, I kind of operate sort of as a creative director of the studio where I'm just going kind of room to room and just listening project to project and, and trying to um, squeeze out maybe uh, debatably uh, uh, another percent or two out of the project, even though the team is uh, that I, that I work with is uh, I would say is some of the, the most talented sound designers that uh, on earth. And uh, it's a really, really awesome place to to be inspired and and work with and so it's a very positive cool environment a very creative environment very um collaborative and pushing each other to kind of like take things just a little bit further and um really working on those final percentages to take any a project And, and and mostly it's like my mission up until i was doing this podcast really is um to speak toward what sound can do for um projects and psyche and how it relates to emotions and um and i think that this this podcast was kind of like a manifest of just a lot of stuff rolling around in all of our heads uh just that we hear on a daily basis i would say that most people generally scratch their heads whenever i tell like even family members scratch their heads whenever i kind of try to tell them what we do um (laughs) it's just one of those things uh, well the, the the conversation usually goes like, okay, so what do you do? I know you work in like television or something. I'm like, yeah, we work on TV and this and that and whatever. And they're like, well, what, you know, do you have any music you can share with me or or whatnot? I'm (laughs) I'm like, unfortunately we don't do any of that. Uh, so our role is like making dialogue sound as, as great as it possibly can. And then, um, typically all of the, the world that the characters are in are, is rebuilt from the ground up. And, um, doing things like stretching sounds like the sonic palette emotionally, um, to really get what the directors or the producers or the writers or the networks are trying to communicate to the audience. And so it's, uh, it's a very like unique thing, but I, I also feel like the podcast kind of in a very roundabout way is communicating to the part of the brain that I've been trying to like communicate to. So it's it's been fun, even in just this the, the short the few short weeks we've had this. It's uh, it's nice to just point people. It's like this is kind of what I do, but I think if you if you're even somewhat interested in this, go check out this little podcast that we made about it. And um, 
and yeah, so it's like, I, I would say that this, the motivation has been, there's been a lot of head scratching for the past 15 years of me working in this industry and I love <laughs> it. Um, but for the most part, and this is not everyone, but for the most part, sound is kind of relegated as this backroom thing that you're not invited to unless you're like a techie or, you know, you're not really allowed to like think about it or talk about it or someone kind of like talk you down from tech stuff. And, and the thing that I've been doing with my business and through speaking randomly or, or whatever is really just like inviting everybody to the table to talk about sound and be allowed to play with sound, whether or not they have the tools or not. Um, and, and that's kind of what led me to th- start doing this stuff is I, I just think that everyone should be have invited to this awesome sense that we have. Uh, you know, if you, if you don't like the look of your, living room, you might paint the walls, or if you don't like the smell of your kitchen, you might light a candle. But sound is one of those things that we just kind of completely turn off, even though it can be something that could hurt, like affect your health through anxiety. I mean, dissonance is not healthy, especially like just continuous dissonance. So, um, so yeah, uh, it's just been this, this long journey that's, you know, this, this podcast is kind of like built into what I do on a daily basis. It's built into the, to the talks that I have with people and the community, the, the conversations I have with, with my team. And, uh, so much of it is born out of their, um, conversations as well. Cause we're all in this little teeny tiny club that we, we, we care so much about what sound can do. Um, but sometimes we feel a little inadequate, like we can't communicate that to people really well. So we wanted, we were just like, how do we just make this incredibly, incredibly topical? Um, to where some, some, you know, I could send it to, you know, a grandmother and she would totally get it. And then a 10 year old could totally get it. And, uh, and what came out of it has just been such a blast for us. You mentioned a couple of things that I could definitely relate to one being an avid podcast listener for, you know, the better part of a decade that, that, that I can certainly appreciate as well as having a day job. That's very difficult to explain to others. I've talked a little bit in the past about my day job and I have that same type of thing. Somebody says, well, what do you do? And then you, you take a deep breath and figure out if there's any way you can phrase it better than the last time you were asked this question, because that didn't work too well. So I can appreciate both of those Absolutely. things. Uh, let me ask you though, you said the company's about seven years old. You've been a listener for 10 years. So so what uh, what sort of first sparked the idea of, you know, hey, maybe 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 our company, maybe me, maybe my team could start to put together something like this? What, when did the spark start? The spark's been, been there for a while. Um, I've owned like the domain name 20,000 hertz dot com, even though that's not what I'm even using for the show, even though it redirects to that. I've owned that domain name for so long now. I mean, it's probably been, been I don't know, upwards of 10 years plus. I knew I wanted something. Uh, it's, it's always been this kind of like deep burning desire to get, I guess, regular people excited. Like I get excited. I feel like, I, I mean, it, it, to me, it's like in, in general, like this show is incredibly, incredibly simple. Um, and I, I feel like for the longest time, I'm just like all by myself with this, this rich, amazing stuff that I think about all the time, same with our team. And so, um, we all kind of, you know, out of the few people who work together, it's just, it's come out of these conversations we've had. And, um, these are the type of conversations we typically can't really have with outsiders, if you will. Um, because I, I've noticed that a lot of people like wants to kind of go down that, that road, uh, as a sound designer, you kind of trump the room there. It's like, as soon as you kind of start talking about sound or something sonic, it's like typically the other person will kind of shut down and it's like, okay, I'm not invited to this party. And it's like, um, I- I've never really liked that dynamic. Uh, you know, it's like a photographer, I think has a different perspective because a lot of people can appreciate visuals no matter what music is, isn't even is a perfect example everyone has opinions on music. Uh, Everyone's invited to the party on music. Um, But once you start to get a little off track and start talking about just sound in general, uh, that's where I see a lot of like just question marks go up. And, and for me, it's just this very, very simple concept with these amazing, rich uh, ideas and stories behind it. So it started the the bug started a long time ago. Um, I, I thought that it only started a few years ago, but, um, as you know, and how this kind of all blew up is, uh, Roman Mars put it on his show, uh, last week. 
and he, uh, I, I, I re I read an email that we had, we, we'd spoke, uh, about five years ago and I, and I read an email recently. Uh, I just went back to see like how that, that origin story of us connecting was. And even in that first initial email, I, I said, I've considered starting my own podcast and, and now looking back on it, it was, it was still this like all along. Uh, so it's just been this thing that I, I'm, I'm incredibly cautious as a business owner and I'm incredibly cautious as a sound designer. And, uh, I'm always kind of thinking of what can go wrong and what's going to go right and where am I not seeing something. And so this is something that's just really, I've been simmering on for, um, five plus years and it just slowly got closer and closer. And I would, I would tell a couple people about it and sometimes people wouldn't get it. And sometimes, sometimes people would, and, I think it started really moving whenever I got to talking to, I guess my like podcast kindred spirit, which is the writer on the show, Mylon Fitzwater Barrows. It's she's the type of person that's like when, when serial came out, we would immediately call each other and be like, can you believe that this happened? I think this is going to happen. I think this is going to happen. And then that led to like, we constantly trade like what podcasts we love and, um, she, she would tell me what she loves. I would tell her what, what, what I love. We would argue about things. We have this great relationship where it's like, we can just like completely argue for a half hour and then like turn it all around and like make some amazing spark out of it. And, uh, and yeah, we got to talking and she's, a, she's an unbelievable like television writer. Um, that also like is very ch- like she, she challenges me a lot. Uh, and that's really helpful because I, even though I'm, I, I feel like I have a, a decent grasp of trying to tell high level stories to people who don't work in the industry. She will very clear, like if it doesn't interest her, cause she's not a sound designer, she's a writer. Uh, if it doesn't interest her, she just simply won't write it. Um, <laughs> which, which she'll just refuse. Uh, so I think that like it really start to get mo- got get moving around then. And that was probably about a year and a half ago when we started talking about this. And once we actually started putting the pieces in place, that was a a good nine months ago, I think, when we started actually recording lines. Uh, So it was a very long lead time uh, because we were being very careful. To be honest, we had no idea what we were doing. Uh, Doing something for for the ear only is a a completely different challenge than than television. It's a completely different pace. Uh, I could even critique our first few shows uh, in a very what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. Uh, type of way uh, based off of that. Um, but yeah, I mean, even this, uh, we, we did a show on the NBC chimes, which is the one that I think most people heard us from. And, uh, and to be honest, we've been working on that show for so long that we've all like have a policy of like, no longer can we talk about the NBC chimes just because it's been <laughs> a part of our life for so long. I think it's a cool story, but to be on by the end of it, we thought this is this is not going to work. People are going to hate us. Like, and then, and then I'm getting, and then I'm getting emails like, you know, people saying that like they're, they're getting emotional at the end and stuff. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what we're going for. But I, I, I didn't think you would feel that way. Uh, so yeah, it's been a really big whirlwind cause it's, it's just been a build up, build up, build up, build up for so long. Um, and then nine months of like pretty intense, you know, working on things. We have a, a, quite a few shows that are way down the pike that we've already been working on. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, it's been this massive buildup to this moment and this spark where we finally have tons of people now actually writing out. I mean, relatively, I think that our audience is still relatively small, but it's still uh, amazing to get people that I don't know reacting to it. And in those early days when you were first putting this together, I'm kind of curious how I imagine it was always anticipated that uh, de facto sound, the name of your business, was going to be involved. But in those early days, the nine, ten months ago when you started, were, were you using sort of regular day time for this type of thing? Or was this something kind of nights and weekends, side project, because you didn't know sort of what would happen? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I would say I have a... An, a major advantage here, uh, an unfair advantage. Uh, whereas I said, I'm not a writer or a producer or a, or I'm not a, I'm not a writer, producer, public radio person. Um, any of these traditional aspects, I do have an unfair advantage that I have, um, an amazing, amazing group of sound designers around me. Uh, even every single person that every sound designer we have, uh, beat out a thousand other sound designers to be on this team. And so I have an unbelievably, um, huge advantage in that regard. 
but we took it really seriously right up front uh, because the other thing I do is I actually own a business and, and to the point now where we've gotten through our first year, we've gotten through our fifth year. Now we're in year seven. Uh, I've made a lot of mistakes going through that, but now I get a little bit of the business stuff too. And I know that things need to be motivated and things need to pay for themselves. And that was another thing that, um, that we did as we is is every one of the team I wanted to make sure that was paid from day one uh, writer uh, if we did any APs producers like anybody coordinating uh, the entire operation from top to bottom was paid fairly from day one and that was something that um, the business which ultimately uh, since I'm the the this the sole partner of this business was ultimately me uh, I, I I just felt like it, it matched our mission really well. And, um, it's really expensive to do it, but, uh, but there are times where we have downtime in our schedules and what we've done traditionally with the downtime we've had in our schedules is we've helped a lot of new filmmakers, um, with their first projects and things, which is a really uh, noble cause and planting seeds for the future and, and planting these and talented people. Um, but it was time in our, in our business to, start to try to invest a little bit in our own original thing. And this just seems so perfect. So this entire thing from the very beginning was uh, done during business hours, during our off time. And, uh, and we burned a lot of hours having no idea what we were doing. Um, (laughs) I I think that, I mean, I couldn't even, I mean, estimating, I think just sound time alone was like 80 hours on our NBC one. And that was just, that was, you know, in our off time, just on and off for, long periods of time. And that's not even including like the writing time and going back and forth with just the script and figuring out and, and the recording time and, and, uh, coordination time. Uh, but, but right up front, I wanted to, if, if I was going to do this, uh, I wanted to go all in. I, I contacted a branding team who did the branding on our, on our, uh, on de facto sound site to do the branding of the, of the podcast. Uh, I felt like putting money where my mouth was, was going to get this ball rolling. And, um, and like I'd mentioned before, this is, these topics have, are something that are deep in my soul. And I knew that the topics were there. Uh, and so I just wanted to dive in head first and hold myself accountable. And I've noticed as a business owner, whenever I hold myself accountable with, with not asking for, for, you know, over the top favors or anything, it's like people give right. their all with the, with those things. And so I wanted to just treat this with the love and respect that it had to begin with. Now that's not to say that this, that, that we don't want to monetize at some point because it can't be an indefinite thing that's just being pulled straight from the studio. Uh, but I am in a very good situation where we can use some of our downtime to produce this. No. And that's why I was asking really, because I wasn't sure it's, I think it said something about you and the company and the direction of the team that the vision for this, however long the tale may have been, was to be sort of, uh, you know, financed through the group that everyone was going to be paid, that this was, uh, there had to be some foresight confidence, if you will, on, on what you ultimately hoped this could be if you sort of took this approach from day one. Yeah. And it's really, I would say it's really scary to, yeah. <laughs> to just do that. And then on top of that, put my own voice out there as the as the sound of this podcast because for me i mean like with with anybody my my voice is nails on a chalkboard whenever i hear it and um and it was and also it's uh i've uh, the company i mean if you if you look at it and you see the website there's this like mystery and allure to it and it's all by design like all the marketing is like you know we want somebody to reach a little bit for us and and you know if, if a if somebody who's who's not looking for our services looks at it They might go, okay, I don't get this at all. But the people that were marketing to want this little bit of push and pull, and there's a little little bit of like flirt in the pro in it, and it's just very, it's very covered and reserved where it's this work focus thing. And I've done that on purpose for for a while because I want to attract those type of people to the business. So to to one dive a put you know a good chunk of money into the this this personal project, and then two to put my own voice on it out there out front for everyone to hear, uh, to hear my flaws and to hear, you know, all these little things that I I'm hypersensitive about was really scary. And, um, but here we are. Uh, I I hope my friends are starting to get used to my voice, uh, at least my whatever podcast (laughs) voice. And, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been pretty exciting. So break it down for us, Dallas. I've got vague familiarity 
with the name of the podcast, but I imagine a lot of people have no idea what it is. I, I, I'm no, you know, audio expert, but I believe this is, I've heard 20,000 Hertz in reference to vinyl and things of that nature, but can you break down sort of the, the meaning of that title and why you thought it was a, a, a good path? Yeah, so 20,000 Hertz is, is uh, really simple. It's the range of human hearing, uh, on, roughly, on average. Uh, as you get older, you start, to, you start to hear less of those high frequencies. But we can hear from roughly 20,000 Hertz, which a Hertz is basically a cycle. It's a, it's a push and pull on the air that, uh, you know, our atmosphere, you know, you have to have this atmosphere to be able to push and pull on it uh, to be able to project a sound into someone's ears. And so we can hear basically from 20 cycles up to 20,000 cycles. But as we get a little bit older, it starts to go down to 18 and 18,000 and 16,000 and 15K. So maybe by if I'm doing this for another 20 years, it'll be called 14,000 hertz or something. <laughs> you, could, you could release each new season with an ever lowering number reflective of yeah, your age. <laughs> that would be perfect. I love this idea. <laughs> yeah, it might not be good for SEO or iTunes charts, but, no. you know, <laughs> just for fun, it would be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you've got the name, you talked already about sort of the website and the artwork, and, and, and you've got the people involved, and, and you guys start writing, and you, you mentioned sort of how you had uh, a few topics in mind over the years right off the bat. So take us now a little bit closer to launch day, sort of how are these, how many stories were you working on consecutively, sort of what was the last like 90 days before launch like? 10 episodes. Uh, so we have 10 all in production, and um, all very seriously in production. And so we did a lot of interviews for a lot of these different shows. So we, I, th- th- I think we had one that we replaced. Um, the two that really stuck the longest was the Siri and the NBC. We knew we wanted to launch with those two because they're so uh, relevant to most people uh, with broadcasting and with, uh, you know, obviously this is a phone medium. Right. But... Um, which is interesting because I was just talking to somebody today about uh, how irrelevant both of those two subjects are for somebody overseas uh, because they don't recognize necessarily <laughs> that English voice of Siri, uh, nor do they have they grown up with the NBC chime. So it's just an oversight that we had. But those were the two um, that we really wanted to talk about. And NBC in particular for me was, was important because I, I worked at NBC. NBC is the first company that gave me an internship, which in turn led me down all of these crazy paths that lead me to talking to you right now. And so it, it wasn't it out of any sort of, uh, I need to do this out of the kindness of my heart. It's just that I would walk by a mural every day in Burbank, California, next to like Jay Leno's studio. And it had this whole, um, history of the peacock and the chimes and just all this fascinating stuff. And um, for years I would walk by it and I just thought it was an interesting story. And, and as I've gotten older, I've gotten really, really interested in branding in general. Uh, whenever I branded my own company, I worked with a, an incredible branding studio, uh, who really taught me how just opened up the world to how every, every line and every curve means something to the heart and soul of that brand. And, uh, and, you know, nowadays, and, and this is something that I refer to on the, the NBC show is just that whenever you think of branding now, you just automatically go, oh, yeah, the, the, the logo. Um, that's just because we live in such a visual world and we have an easy way to push that everywhere. Um, but I was just fascinated with the whole idea that at some point it was going to be something sonic that that triggered someone's emotion of what something meant. And so those were the two that we, we really landed on the longest. Uh, but we also wanted, uh, as far as some of the strategy, is we wanted to do different types of shows that could attract different types of audiences. Because, we again, we felt like this, this topic is inc- incredibly wide-ranging. So w- we, had the, we had the series show, which we felt could, could be very... That was our opener, and we ha- it was very broad. Like, most people could get that. Um, the NBC show was a bit of a nod to... Um, inviting some of, especially going down the, the radio track, I really wanted to like make a podcast that like didn't alienate certain parts of the population. And, um, and I loved that, like, like the older generation could, could really appreciate that. And it's really awesome that I'm getting emails from people who are a lot older than I am and, and appreciating that, that, that subject. And that it took them down memory lane and things like that. And that was, I, I wanted that so badly. And then if you saw right after it, we went kind of the, 
more to, to the my generation with the 8-bit sounds, which is something that like brings all of this nostalgia up in me. Yeah. And, and, I, and I wanted that but because I wanted to then kind of like go over here and say like, you know, hey, over here, like we got something for you too. And what we're hoping to do is just like with every new subject, we can kind of scoop up different people around that like, you know, as someone's perusing our, our work there, they can look at something that just kind of triggers something and then maybe they'll stick around for the rest of them. The next show that we're going to do, it's going to be the first one that we're doing. That's not, uh, and by the time we, this, this comes out, it'll be out. But the next show that we're doing is a mystery show. Um, it's the first one that's going to be about an interesting sound, but not a recognizable sound. So we're looking forward to that. Um, and then after that, we have a lot of really kind of, uh, interesting things. We have a show about sounds that are going extinct, uh, which I, I'm really into and uh, is, is really uh, quirky and funny. Uh, sounds that have gone extinct and are going extinct. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so we just have a, a lot of these. We have, we have something on audio descriptions. We have, uh, we have uh, the sound of space is something that I'm really working on hard uh, or what it would sound like on different planets. And, and I've talked to some people at NASA and trying to work with different scientists on that and, and to really recreate that. And, uh, so there's just a lot of like very topical subjects and, and the, the, the length is, is all by design as well as I, I just, I didn't want to ask so much of the listeners. I, I'm getting a lot of comments of, of, I just wish it was longer and I sure I wish it was longer <laughs> too. Uh, but, but you know, it, it costs a lot of money to produce at that level. <laughs> right. Um, but, but yeah, even the, the, dis, the, the length is, I just didn't want to like, we didn't want to waste anyone's time. And I just wanted to say like, if someone was scrolling around and they're like, oh, okay, I have, I have time to listen to a 13 minute podcast, but then I can still call my friend afterward. Uh, I just wanted to like not get in too deep with like commitment. Um, and so I don't know if we'll ever change that length of the show or whatnot, but it felt right for me. It's, it's like the length of time that I love listening to podcasts. Hey folks, pardon the interruption, if you would. It is time now for me to tell you about this week's show sponsor. Podbean is back again. These guys have been so good to the Podcast Digest and myself. And I want to tell you about it because if you're a podcaster, maybe you're looking for a new home for your podcast. Maybe you're not completely happy with your hosting service, or maybe you're just a really passionate super fan uh, listening to the show right now. And considering about st uh, potentially starting your own show. Well, Podbean's a great place to start. Let me tell you why. They're going to give you everything you need uh, for hosting and even monetization. They're going to set you up with a blog-like website. You're going to be able to customize the mess out of this stuff with themes and colors, etc. You're going to be able to share your published podcast to all the socials with some really high-quality embeddable players. Uh, you can even integrate the whole Podbean service into your own website. Say you've already got a site because you've got a great idea idea for a show. All the necessary RSS iTunes support. You can import your show, redirect it, full support for migrating from a current hosting provider. They can set you up with an app for both Android and iOS. Uh, you're going to be part of their online directory. Great promotional opportunities. I see all the time them tweeting about featured shows uh, that are part of Podbean. You're going to get comprehensive podcast statistics. Woo-hoo! I talk about that all the time. I love the stats. I'm a stat junkie. Podbean can provide you all that. And when you're ready to take everything to the next level, Podbean's got your back there too. Integrated monetization tools. You can make episodes designated as premium content. You can... Uh, participate in their advertising platform even their very own patron program is all set up and available to you at podbean and right now if you go to podbean.com slash tpd you can learn more about all this great stuff i'm telling you about and you'll get your first month free better yet as i mentioned up front if you're listening to this before the end of 2016 12 31 16 podbean has an end of the year deal for you 30 percent off their annual hosting plans there's no better time to try podbean check them out there's a link in the show notes and my thanks to podbean for supporting the podcast digest now back to our show you mentioned alice the uh, when you decided that you were going to be sort of front and center with the show with handling the primary uh narration etc that was something new for you but in your description there uh of the the last few months before launch i imagine that wasn't the only sort of new thing for you what i was curious about was you you talked about doing interviews as well and anyone who's listened knows that that you've interviewed a lot of different people was that another one of those uh, on that first time list in terms of sort of recording and, and prepping interviews 
Oh my goodness. I was so, I, I didn't even prepare for the nervousness that I had in that interview. Uh, <laughs> cause the first person I interviewed was the voice of Siri. And I, I typically, whenever I was, um, younger, I, I worked at a talk show in LA and I, I get to mic a lot of celebrities and stuff. So pretty famous people on camera, but I get really nervous whenever I'm talking to like a YouTube celebrity or a nerdy celebrity or like Siri or something <laughs> like that. And, and so I, I had, um, interviewed her and I just realized, wow, the art of an interview is so, so, so deep. Um, and, and since I've done, I've been on the recipient end of in interviews a little bit uh, more lately, uh, in my, in my day job and in this, and, uh, it's amazing to just see like a good interviewer, like really can pull things out. And I don't feel like I have, have that yet. I I've gotten better for sure. Um, I, I, I will say that I have a brand new appreciation for how public radio works, how audio only content works, uh, because not only, I mean, not only I just like to, to recap. And I think that this is, this is a great thing. Like episode one of a podcast, especially something that's highly produced is extremely hard. Now episode two is hard, but it's nothing compared to episode one. <laughs> so episode one there are so many factors you're trying to determine. Like, what's the show mu music going to be? What's the logo going to look like? What's the website going to look like? Uh, what's the music style going to be? What's the uh, the pace of this? How long are we going to go at this? Um, what's going to be the arc? How, is there going to be a, a common arc, or is it going to be things that are different? How are we going to do the credits? Uh, who who are we even going to work with? Like, what producers? What um, you know, what sound designers, uh, what, you know, web developers, um, who are we going to interview? Uh, there's poor interviewing skills in there. Uh, my voice, uh, was a, was a massive, massive, massive issue trying to figure out what my voice was. Um, I, I went through so many different styles of trying to read until I threw my hands up and I said, I will never be able to do this unless I just sit down and do it. And that's what it's going to be. And so I, I tried to read it with more energy and I tried to read it like a, like a host. And, um, I have some old painful recordings. Uh, the thing that really got this thing that the spark that really got us going was the Radiotopia, um, pod quest. It was, we, had, we had, um, submitted to that a two minute teaser and even listening back on that, my own delivery was was like painful because I hadn't figured it out yet. And uh, and it really just came to like I just need my own voice and I need to not overthink it. And and really like now it's it's like I might record it like once or twice. And if I flub it, maybe like three times. And if I flub it, most likely like there's a there's a way of speaking that I need to change. And so I'm learning on the fly all these things and um, to produce something beautiful. And, and now I have a whole new appreciation for all of the classics and 99% invisible and this American life and all of the Gimlet shows. I mean, the, the amount of learning it takes to even like develop something and then like get to the point of even launching. I mean, there were multiple times where we were like, is this even worth it? Like draining finances. And there were multiple times where we were all just like kind of just, just tension because it was like, we, we haven't gotten any feedback from any of this and we're just working so hard on this thing. And, and, and now like all of the little quirks in it are not funny. And, you know, it just, it, we just have to like move on and, and get this thing out there. So, so all that to say is just like, we, we had to learn everything because we don't no no one in our studio was a, was a, was a, a public radio person or could say like, this is okay. And the few people that I know in public radio, it's like, it's been so nice for them just to say like, Oh yeah, this is super, super, super hard. And I'm like, Oh, thank goodness. Because I thought it was just us. <laughs> it's, it's not just our process. It's the actual process is very hard. Yeah. Uh, I, I can, I, I can appreciate so many of the things you were saying there, you know, in terms of voice and the, the interviewing and so on and so forth. Uh, I, I have no idea what I'm doing, and I've done over 100 of these interviews. So I feel the same I'm, way. I'm with you on that front. <laughs> I'm with you on that front. The only thing I can hope is that, that, that I'm hopefully getting better as well. And one of the things I try to do is to always try to be sort of the voice of the listener to all these shows that, that I get the chance to talk to. And so you've mentioned it a few times, and now I've got to ask the question that a lot of people are probably wondering wondering uh you came to my attention as i imagine a lot of people listening to this right now because of your appearance on 99 percent invisible which was phenomenal and uh roman mars former guest a lot of the radiotopia folks are uh and he's just i met him in person he was a great guy when i met him in chicago at podcast movement this past year very nice very down to earth uh and i'm sure everyone's really curious and wondering how that whole story came together so i 
I started listening to his show from the very beginning, which I believe is about six years ago now. And um, back then they were a lot shorter. They weren't as uh, as tight as they as they are now. Uh, but he did these sound these shows about sound that I was just like I just gobbled up like the second I would see that he did a show about sound, I'd just be all over it. And then um, the following early the next year after he, he had launched that, I was making a trip out to San Francisco to a game developers conference because I work in the video game side too, doing trailers and stuff. And so I went out there and I was just a genuine fan and, and I, I just have a tendency to just ask for things, even if they're very impossible to that, that they'll come true. Um, I figure <laughs> I can ask 50 times and maybe two things will happen. And, uh, and those two things can change my life. Um, and so I, I reached out to him and, and to me, it's just like, I, I mean, he's a, he's a celebrity. It's just, uh, I, I'm just so infatuated with his, with his mind and how he puts together and show and how he thinks uh, about and the care he takes. And so I, I just reached out and I'm like, and I just said, Hey, I'm going to be out in San Francisco and I'd love to, um, grab dinner. And if you want to, if you want to meet up, and he immediately wrote back and he said, sure, let's make it happen. And so I went out there, um, met with him. This was like five years ago. Uh, just the warmest, nicest human on the planet. I, I would say that his persona on, on a show is so accurate to who he is. Uh, right. just generous, uh, just loves the craft, just incredibly intelligent, incredibly humble. Um, and just an inspiring person. Like he's the type of guy that when you talk to him, he makes you feel good. Um, it's just an interesting, interesting thing that a lot of people don't have. And so we, we met then and I didn't really have a lot to think about the po- I mean, I had a, a role in my head. Maybe one day I'll do a podcast, but more so I was like, if I ever, if you ever need help, you know, I have a, I'm a sound designer and all this stuff. I'd be happy to help. So, you know, we became Facebook friends and you know, for five years, just kind of commented back and forth, um, you know, on, on cute kid pictures and stuff, but just very topical friendship, you know, Facebook type of friendship. And, um, and then we reconnected, uh, just a few weeks ago, whenever third coast happened, cause I've never gone to any sort of podcasting or radio convention at all, but I felt like with our lack of story, uh, storytelling, understanding, um, I needed to kind of put myself around some other people could that, that could say what's going well, what's not going so well. And so we just happened to bump into each other, um, in passing. And he, uh, was incredibly encouraging on the show. And I had told him, I, I wrote him an email before I launched the first show. And I said, I mean, this is so obviously inspired by what you're doing. And I just want you to take that as a, um, take that hopefully in a very positive way. Like I, I hope that it's not coming off as a ripoff or anything. I just, I just, it's, it's, that like 99% invisible has been something that's changed the way that I have even interacted with my own business and how I've communicated about my own business for so long, not even the the podcast way before the podcast was ever a thing. It's um, it's just, he made like design this just very intriguing interest, this thing that like is magical and full of wonder and all this. And it's like from the, I started my business pretty much like nearly the same day as he started uh, 99 PI and like right around the same time. So it was just something that like really connected, uh, with me. And, and I was very business focused at the time. So time, time passed. We, we saw each other at third coast. And of course, in like classic Roman style, he's just in so encouraging. He's just like, so complimentary of the show. And, you know, I, I didn't want anything out of it. I just, I felt so amazing that he was just like, Oh God, I have the, I have the, the seal of approval from Roman. And, and I know if, even if he heard this, he would be just like, you know, blushing and just be like, Oh my goodness. But, um, <laughs> but it was amazing. And then, then, you know, we, he, he gave me a few tips and tricks and things and we kind of went on our, went on our way and then, um, put out our second episode and then, uh, which was that NBC show. And then he just hit me up and said, Hey, would you like for us to, or I, I'd love to play this if you're interested. And, you know, of course I'm, ecstatic and it's uh something that i've been listening to for for all these years and to have to be a part of that in a small way uh that's that's kind of how everything came to pass uh he was just so kind to see that the content worked on his uh platform which is interesting because he've ta- he's talked a little bit about those those branding things before early on there was a show uh, called the sizzle actually that's that's that has a, some of some similar themes in there so um he's covered that before, which is, which is really cool that, that he kind of revisit it with a, with a new voice. 
and uh, and yeah, since since that happened, it's just. Uh, you know, uh, the stats are just a hockey stick because, um, one of the things (laughs) that he said is just, you know, I I said, you know, thank you so much for this. You know, this is big, big, big for us. And, and he was just like, uh, he just said like, it's my duty to do this. Like my audience would dig this. And I was like, wow, that's a really nice way to think of that. Uh, but, but seriously, you're doing a pretty amazing service, uh, for this, for this podcast. And once this happens, now you get the the full force, uh, like probably not many of the rest of us can fully appreciate of what 99% Invisible really is in the podcasting world. And so talk to me about sort of uh, like the day before, day of, day after, what that that line was like for you on on the release of uh, the NBC Chimes onto the 99% Invisible feed. This had to just like completely change uh, your day to day. Yeah, um, we were all talking about it behind the scenes the studio and and we had no idea what to expect but i know he has a, a massive audience and and a massive amount of lawyer loyal listeners but the concern that i had is like how many people are going to listen to this show actively leave this show actively go to the search uh field and actively type in all spelled out because you can't get it by putting 20k and if somebody knows how to do that if i if you put in 20k and twenty thousand hertz comes up i would love to know that <laughs> um, but you typing out all like complete 20,000 Hertz, uh, then finding our show and then clicking on it and then not just clicking, hopefully just on the shows, but hit clicking subscribe. Like how many people would do that? Like, that's what I was, you know, cause a lot of times like I'm driving or something and if, if I hear a new show, it's like, okay, I got to just like mental note that. Right. So, um, but people did that for sure. Yeah. I mean, it went from just super organic growth to just straight up for like three days. <laughs> just indefinitely and still i have no idea where this is going to land um so yeah it's it's been uh been quite the whirlwind with that and um and his audience is not is, is a loyal bunch and and the people that i'm seeing coming over and starting to chat on twitter and things these are like really intelligent really fascinating people and and he has a very special audience over there and uh and it's and it's uh, the influence and the, and the size of that is incredible i'm blown away that there's a small portion of those people who want to hear what we're doing. And, uh, and at this point we just, uh, now we're in like, okay, we've kind of hit our initial goals for like where we feel like we can, we can take this continuous, continuously past 10. And, uh, now it's just, we've got to make an excellent thing every single time. And it's nice to not have to worry a huge amount of, of, of that audience currently. Of course we still have to grow that cause we can't monetize where we're at right now. But, um, but now I feel like uh, we were given a, a really nice boot, like just shot uh, to, to, to try to, to try to do that. I, I think you hit on it a minute ago, Dallas, and, and, and I'll echo this. And I, and I mean this in the absolute best possible way that this this almost feels as if it could be a 99 uh, percent invisible sub brand, you know, almost like if 99 P.I. picked out, you know, uh, different topics to dive deeper in on that 20,000 hertz could be a part of that family tree, if you will. And I think that's why a lot of people are doing that jump over, hit subscribe and go through the back catalog, because what you described there is exactly what I did. And ironically enough, I I had that same thing with the search. And I said, no, wait a minute, it's got to be in here somewhere. And uh, actually, I got it through the show notes uh, of my podcast app, um, because Roman, I believe, had linked over to it and it popped me over to the right place. So uh, that actually solved that for me. But uh, I, I think that people are going to see that I don't know if subconscious homage is the right terminology for for sort of what you're doing with with the relationship to 99% PI. It, it doesn't sound like a ripoff. It sounds more like a like a sister product, if you will. And uh, I think that like an HBO or HBO two type relationship. And I think that's why a, a lot of people from that camp are really uh, happy with what they see so far from you guys. That's what I'm hoping for. And to be honest, I was really, really, really concerned of it coming across as a ripoff or a spinoff. Um, and I, that's, I really feel like that was probably why I, I sat on this for so long. Um, I wanted to feel right that I wasn't stepping on, on Roman's toes on something. And, um, and I know if he, if he, if we were talking about this, he'd be like, no, that's not, no, no. it's just like, I just know I could hear him saying that. But, um, but I just didn't want to like start to like impede in this space. Um, until I was certain that it was something that would be okay. Uh, you know, over the years, uh, you know, he still does sound shows. I mean, he did an awesome one on reverb recently. So there's, there's, uh, he still does sound, sound shows, but it's, there's enough space in there that I felt like, 
um, that it was okay to kind of like take the ball of that sound category and kind of like that would that would appeal to, to similar types of listeners and and take it take that ball and run with it now granted we're we're not going to stay to the exact same format as 99 PI. I know that they do a lot of shows very much about the built world by humans. Uh, mm-hmm. but this show is going to go way into other, uh, curveball areas. So we have a lot more flexibility into, to natural things and, and things that have nothing to do with humans. And, and like, I want to be able to explain things like atmosphere in a really, really, really entertaining way. Uh, a lot of science things. And, um, that I want to, want to chat, chat about. There's even, there's, uh, the, the, we're based out of Washington DC. So there's some, sonic things and in, in politics and Congress and things that I want to capture and tell stories around. So there's a, there's a lot of different ways that we can go. Uh, but I knew early on, it's like people are going to start to define the show based off of the few shows that we put out. But now I'm curious how that audience will accept how we open up that, that realm a little bit wider. Yeah, I, I personally don't think you have a worry there at all. Uh, for whatever my little opinion's worth, I think that the the nature of the storytelling, I think, is what people will be drawn into. And that homage element to 99% PI is, is only meant as a compliment. And I think that will... The reason that show is so successful is its storytelling and its production value and, and it's well-researched. And, and along with the other elements, like you mentioned, the, the, the strong narration and the, the show length and so on and so forth. And, and I think you're checking already a lot of those boxes, which is why I think Roman felt like this needed to be, uh, you know, a, an episode of 99 percent invisible and i think that you know regardless of sort of the directions or the topics as long as those thematic elements continue and all those uh elements stay you know up front for the listener to to continue to grasp i i I think i'm looking forward to the ride personally some of those other things you were talking about with some of the upcoming episodes like space or if you guys go into congress and hey 2017 could be an interesting uh sounding year uh, around your town so (laughs) exactly (laughs) could be a lot there (laughs) of stories to tell it was interesting it's like i felt like in my mind there was a lot of guidance from that 99 pi uh model and things but then whenever it was interesting like listening to, to his show and then whenever he played our show i was like okay we're we're doing our thing. I, somebody said, and maybe this is a third coast or something, but they said like, no matter what, even if you're, you feel like you're imitating in certain ways, like it's going to come out on your own voice typically. And I even felt like, oh, I'm really hoping that I'm not delivering like Roman or like doing any of that stuff. Like I haven't made a conscious effort. Like if I hear something and I'm like, Oh no, that's, that's very much a, a thing that he would do. Like I, I will change it to make sure that it's, it's clear, but it, hearing it in context, like right on a show, I was like, okay, we're, we're doing something different and, and exciting. And I felt like hearing it in that show made me go, okay, we have like our own fingerprint on this. And, um, and, and we saw that fingerprint. And, and the other thing that I've learned through this process is just how inviting like the radio, the public radio and the podcasting industry is. Uh, it's incredibly supportive where I, I work a little bit more in, in a competitive world on the television side because there's a lot of money at play and there's a lot of, you know, what, what comes with that. Uh, but but on the radio side, it's it's just born out of like a spirit of just build each other up. And it's such an exciting time right now that. I just don't get anything but just support on that side. And it's amazing. In terms of support and things of that nature, I hear the the everyday listener in the back of my head right now asking me to ask you this as well, uh, which is you've you've got the the connection with Roman. You've talked about hopefully monetization at some point in the future. Is a network affiliation a potential down the road for you guys? I don't I don't know, really. Um, It's not on my radar right now uh, because because I'm, I'm a business person as well. And so I have my creative brain and I have my business business brain. And I love that I've kind of flip flop back and forth. I don't even think I could join a network until I fully understood the, the business model of advertising. Like I would imagine I would probably start to do advertising on my own, hopefully even pushing, you know, doing dynamic ad insertion and everything and trying to really understand the full spectrum of how that side works before I started to affiliate with, with a, with a network or uh, with a network. But, um, I mean, it's not off the table by any means. Cause, um, I mean, depending on who you go with, I, I understand from a television perspective, it's like, um, in a lot of ways, whenever you do a network, you're essentially buying an ad sales team, which is incredibly valuable because you probably spend more money trying to do it yourself, uh, than, than just hiring people or having a team to do it. 
Uh, but then again, I, I really feel strongly that I've got, I want to, I want to promote brands that I believe in. And it's going to, just like everybody, I mean, everyone wants to change the world with their podcasts and I have my own reasons for that too. And so what does it take for me to get to a point where I dilute it? And I, don't, I just ripped that straight from somebody's mouth and I don't know who to qu- who to give credit to for that. But somebody <laughs> I heard ver- who said like, how far, you know, what does it take financially and what, you know, to say that you would, that would be worth diluting that message. And so that's, that's really where I'm thinking right now. Um, in an absolutely perfect world, we would continue to put this thing out and maybe our de facto sound business grows like gangbusters, uh, even though it's a different world. I don't know if it'll translate to television in any way at all or, or films or games or anything. Uh, I know that our current client base really appreciate it, uh, that we're putting out something because it identifies with them uh, a lot. Right. Like instead of us just being that final thing, we are now identifying with being a content creator. And so they enjoy it. And I think they enjoy the actual show. So, so joining a network, I don't know. I I'm, I've talked to some who've reached out. Um, but I've pretty much said, I'm just going to sit back for probably a few months to really, uh, the main thing is I, I have to see where these numbers land and I have to see what kind of growth we're getting and see if people enjoy it. Um, see what people are reacting to. Um, so long story short, uh, I'm probably not going to do really consider much of that for a little while, uh, because I just don't know the business. I, I have a decent idea of how the business works, but I'd like to get my hands dirty a little bit before starting to jump in on that side. It'll be interesting to watch. That's for sure. Because if, if you've already got people banging on the doors, if, if you guys continue along the track, I think you've set for yourselves. I think those, uh, those bangings will only continue to increase as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, you, you talked about this will be a 10 episode run season one. Is that safe to call season one, 10 episodes? Well, I had initially, even in our artwork, we had a season one on it, but, um, in talks with a lot of people, I didn't want to give the impression that we were going to stop by any means. Um, in a perfect world, we, we push, I mean, this is definitely behind the curtain type of stuff. And in a perfect world we're our biggest goal is what, where are we at after five shows, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What does it look like? Is this feasible? How does the business look supporting it? Can the podcast start to, you know, through advertising is, you know, are there advertisers who actually want to speak to, you know, that might be relevant in this case? Uh, what does that look like? Can it start to, can advertising start to subsidize that? How is this going to be the long term? I would say that I would be pretty happy if, if it could just pay for itself. I think we would have a long run if it could just pay for itself, even with me taking no salary, no, no anything, um, just because I enjoy it. And I think our team really enjoys it. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like we're, we're in this mystery thing here. So we, so long story short, we removed the entire reference to a season, uh, but we do have 10 uh, as a marker and, and well, I would say that we've, uh, thanks to, thanks to Roman and and 99 PI, we've already beat our, our targets for where we felt like we needed to be to seriously consider moving forward. And we still have seven episodes to go before we hit 10. So it's, uh, we're in a very good position right now. So let's look at this optimistically, Dallas. Let's say everything continues to look good and you think that you're going to remove the season reference, so to speak, and, and kind of keep going. There'll be an 11 and 12. Is there that voice in the back of your head that's a little concerned about, you know, a more time pressure, you know, time sensitive delivery of, of future episodes, considering sort of the run up to the initial launch? I mean, obviously, there's going to be efficiencies and a lot of things learned so far. But are, are you concerned about those deadlines potentially becoming more and more concerning as you go into 11, 12, 13, so on? You know, I can see that as being a concern. Uh, but our team, that is the story of our life. We are the last <laughs> phase in a process. So every single day, we're working on two, three, four, potentially more projects that are delivering that day or that like need need immediate attention. And all you know, this this happens, uh, you know, we work on upwards of a 1000 projects a year uh, for for clients and have a, have a pretty healthy client base. And so this would be something, a problem that would be an amazing problem to have. And that would be to hit our own deadlines uh, for once. And so I would say that like, you know, our producer, Sam is incredible. Uh, she knows how to like, you know, tip me off if we're not, if we're, if we're not on target to, to hit something. Um, our team has a really good sense of like, okay, where do we need help? How are we at capacity? Uh, I'm pretty savvy on that. Uh, we have some, a, a couple people that I can rely on as a contractor, uh, level. So 
I'm, you know, if we hit the target, if this thing starts to pay for itself, I would say this thing's going to be very exciting for a while. That is so good to hear. As as a as an early fan, and I imagine a lot of other people are are hopeful for that level of success, so that you know there is a continuance, or or if you know, or at least maybe a, a, a mitigated break, right? I, I think all of us, all of us, uh, you know, avid listeners, kind of understand that you know this stuff is not like you know making uh, widgets in a factory, and and sometimes you know you know a, a thirty or sixty or ninety day kind of you know summer break, if you will. I, I think listenership has kind of been. Uh, program now to understand that that that's possible and that's okay and I think for the best stuff out there I know speaking for myself that I'm more than content with that it's when the disappearances last 9 10 11 12 months that people start to wonder <laughs> so if anyone is looking for 20,000 hertz if they want to hear what we've been talking about uh, tell folks where they can find the show yeah, you can um, go to 20k.org, which is really simple, 20k.org, which should point you in the right direction. And uh, as most people say now, or you can find it on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. How about social media? Oh, yeah, yeah that's too, really right? important nowadays, too. And yes. I really love it when people talk to me uh, because uh, I would say that for so many months we had no, no one telling us if something was good or bad. And so I like emails and I like... Um, people to go to our Facebook and Twitter, which are both 20k org. Um, apparently 20,000 Hertz all spelled out is too long for both of those platforms. Uh, so 20k org for both uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we have not done Instagram. If you want to follow the company, we put things out like kind of behind the scenes on de facto sounds channels, uh, as well, uh, on Instagram or on, on Facebook and things like that. So it's like, if you like the show, check out 20 K org on those two platforms. If you want to start even going further behind the curtain, uh, you can start looking at de facto sounds social. Awesome. I will have links to all of that stuff, uh, folks, in the show notes, as always. Uh, so many cool things. I was, I was just looking back in the back catalog while, while you were answering one of my questions here, Dallas, and think, thinking if I've ever featured a show this early on after their launch, and I'm not sure I have. Uh, if not, it's, it's one of the top three soonest uh, that I've ever reached out to somebody uh, because I enjoyed what you guys are doing so much. And I really wanted folks to uh, get to hear more about sort of how this all came to pass in these first uh, few episodes. And Hopefully, folks will jump on board and, and follow this story from here on out. So, uh, Dallas Taylor, thank you for taking the time. Thank you. And that'll do it for episode 120 on the Podcast Digest. What do you guys think? Tell me, while you were listening to that, you've already hit subscribe on 20,000 Hertz. It is a phenomenal show, and it's just getting started, and I can't wait to see uh, what Dallas and the team over there at DeFacto Sound do uh, with this show uh, in the upcoming weeks and months and hopefully much longer. Uh, it should be a good uh, roller coaster to hop on right now. I'm really excited about it. I hope you are too. Uh, so thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you did, tell somebody about it, man. Share it. Uh, tell uh, t Put it on your Facebook page. You know, uh, Tell everybody about Podcast Digest. I'm quickly approaching. 5,000 followers on Twitter, which absolutely blows my mind that there's that many people who want to hear about this little thing I'm doing. And it really humbles me that you guys are out there talking about it, sharing it, and, and hopefully enjoying the episodes. I uh, also want to thank just one more time my sponsor this week, Podbean, back again. Thank you guys so much. If you are considering starting your own podcast or looking for a new home for your current show, podbean.com slash TPD, you get your first month free if you sign up with that special you URL tells them you came from the podcast digest. Thanks again to Podbean and thanks to you for taking the time to listen. Folks, episode 121 will be at your players next week, next Sunday, the new show. And I'm working on a special episode for the upcoming Christmas holiday. Can't tell you about it yet, but if you listen this far, I figured I'd let you know something special coming for Christmas. Until next week, my name is Dan Lizette for the podcast digest, and I will talk to you then. Thank you for listening to the Podcast Digest. You can follow the show on Twitter at Pod Digest. Like the show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the Podcast Digest. Email the show feedback at the Podcast Digest at gmail.com. And you can find all the previous episodes and exclusive blog entries at the show's website, thepodcastdigest.info. Podcast Digest.